Want to know how I make my clear divided tabs for my A5 planner using laminating sheets and a label maker? Keep watching as I highlight my most popular video, how to make clear divided tabs using laminating sheets, where I show you a step-by-step -step guide on how you too can make clear divided tabs for your planner so you can access your most used pages. Let's go. I have for my top dividers i have monthly paycheck bill tracker cash expense debit expense and this week so i use these dashboard dividers as my bookmark so if i need to refer to a page instead of flicking through the page finding the, the spot that i need i know now that the first one is my this week the one that's next to it is my debit expense tracker and then the third one will be my cash expense tracker, my paycheck bill trackers, and then the monthly is the budget by paycheck calendar. The one on the side tab, I have last month, then there's this month. I also have homeschool. The next divider that I have is my monthly running total. I have savings trackers, and then I also have my cash envelopes. So those are the side ones, and at the bottom, I also have my little different uh, trackers for cash, my debit account, my sinking funds, my savings, and how much total funds we have in our debit and cash. So those are my clear dividers. And so I'm gonna show you how I make them. So these are actually just made of laminating pouches. That's all it is. So nothing inside it. You just run it through the laminator machine and then cut to size. What I'm going to do for the purpose of this video is because I do have overhead lights above is I'm going to show you the demonstration using colored paper. But what happens is you get laminating pouches. These are the ones that I get from our local Kmart. Also, you need a laminating machine and you also need, it's handy, but not necessary, a paper trimmer because then it'll just square your pieces of plastics a lot better then you know if you had to if you're like me and cutting it's not as straight but you don't need a paper trimmer to cut your pieces so let's get going first turn on your laminating machine you need to wait until the red light comes on that indicates it's ready to laminate grab yourself a sheet of laminating pouch or laminating sheet on the short side you have one of it that is sealed that is the end that you're going to feed into your laminating machine. Once your laminating machine is ready, it's time to insert the laminating pouch. It's important that you do feed it into the machine nice and straight so it doesn't get caught inside. Once it's ready, let's take it to the table. And this is the result. A laminating pouch is just a little bit bigger than an A4 size sheet of paper because it needs those extra edges to seal the paper inside. So for the purpose of this video moving forward, I'm going to replace the laminating sheet with paper so you can see it much better on the camera. So I'm just gonna use different colored paper so then you can clearly see how I make it using the laminated sheet. Okay, let's first get some dimensions sorted. So for an A5 sheet of paper, it's technically half of an A4. So the size of my dividers without tabs would be an A5. So let me just grab one of my planners, regardless of whether you're going to have a top tab, a side tab, or a bottom tab, they all first start out with the dimension of the insert you want. So this is my insert size. It's exactly the same. Now, depending on if you want to add a top tab, a side tab, or a bottom tab, you're going to add the extra length or the extra width. Now, for me, I add a quarter of an inch extra for my little tabs. I have tried three eighths of an inch, but then it became too wide and I like using the tiny little labels from my label maker. And so it just looked too far out 
once it's all laying flat. So it's all going to depend on how you want your dividers to look. If you want to have bigger labels, if you want to use a nice hand lettering label and it's a little bit bigger, you might want to make your tabs a little bit wider. But for, my, for me, I like to add a quarter of an inch to the edges for my tabs. I'm just going to grab my ruler to see how wide my dimensions are. So for an A5, the width is 5 7 eighths. I'm going by fractions only because on my quilting ruler, the markings are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this one measured at 5 and 7 eighths in width and of course in length it is 8.25 so I highly oh, 25 which is 28 I highly recommend just grabbing a scrap piece of paper and having these dimensions so then when you are cutting your dividers you can easily know how much to add extra to create your tabs let's say this is a laminated sheet okay so for the purpose of this video this yellow piece of paper is a laminated sheet so that's that you can also create your dividers using cardstock printed paper or any other material but the reason why i use a clear laminated sheet is so when i do have my spread planner spread open i can still clearly see the other side without the divider or dashboard obstructing my view from the other page that I'm not seeing. So that's why I thought the clear dividers worked out really well. It helps me go to my page that I need very quickly using the tab as bookmarks and also dividing up the pages. So let's pretend this yellow sheet is a laminated sheet. So we're going to make some, let's start off with the most common, which is a side tab. This is a side tab. We're going to add an extra quarter of an inch to our laminated sheet so we can make the little tab. So essentially what you're going to have, let's just do a rough one here, is an extra quarter of an inch that we cut here. And that is how we're going to make our little tabs. So that's just rough. What we need to do with the laminated sheet is we first need to measure out 5 7 8 plus 2 8 is 6 and 1 8. Yes, 6 and 1 8. Grab your paper trimmer and first of all measure out so I know that there's 5 7 8 is that one there. I'm going to add an extra quarter of an inch or 2 8, so 1 2, and I'm going to trim my laminator sheet. And now I'm ready to use or to cut up my side tabs. Okay, so depending on how many side tabs you want, that's how many sheets you're going to cut up. So for my side tab, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me just grab, so I grab or I make more clear laminated sheets for however many side tabs I wanna use and then cut up six pieces or if you just want three tabs, cut up three laminated sheets in the size that you want. So I'm hopefully I'm making sense here. So really, depending on how many tabs you want, create those many laminated sheets. Now, for an A5, you will be wasting a little bit of the laminated sheet, but I say that because later down the track, I'm gonna show you how I use those scrap piece of um, laminated sheets for task cards and anything else, or if you wanna make some small pocket size dividers. So don't waste them, keep them handy, put them in a Ziploc bag for later use. For the purpose of this video, how many did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to make six dividers for the side. One, two, three, four, five, six. And remember, these are laminated sheets or whatever material you want to make. So I know already that this length here is eight and two quarters, but if you're using the laminated sheet, you might need to trim it that little bit because remember, it's a little bit wider. So make sure you trim it to size. So we said to add that extra tab, we're gonna add an extra quarter to the width so we can create our tabs. So here we go. 
there's your insert size. I've added an extra quarter of an inch to the edge to make my tabs. Now here's the bit where we create the tabs. Measure out the length of your sheet and you need to divide it by however many tabs you want to make. We know 8.25 is the width or the length of this piece of paper, laminated sheet, cardstock, printed paper. And we're gonna divide it by, in my case, six, because I'm not gonna make six dividers. So we need 1.375. So 0.375 of eight is, so one and three eighths. So six times one and three eighths. Again, I'm using fractions only because I have the quilting ruler and it's a little easier than decimals. You can get a ruler, you can get a tape measure, you can get whatever you like. So first, I'm just using this as a background so you can clearly see. All right, so I need one and three eighths. So that's one, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I was doing one and one eighth, sorry. See, this is why it's good to make your markings before you cut. So what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. So one, one, two, three, eight. Just making this a little bit longer, but on yours, you may not want. One, two, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. So now you have six dividers ready to trim. I grab, I just grab little bulldog clips to keep the sheets together. Now what you're going to do with these marking is just to make a little snippet, the tiniest of little snippet. Now if you do cut your laminated sheet, they do slide. So just um, maybe you want to add, one might want to add two more bulldog clips there or just keep it really tight. So all you want to do is make a tiny little slit on the edge of your laminating sheets. The reason why you cut all of these together is so then when you make the little divided tabs, they are perfectly aligned with each other. So now we can see first page has little markings, second page there. Okay, and just so then I don't confuse myself, I make, I'm gonna cut these off. I'm gonna cut that off and then mark that as a tab. So if you're using plastic, I just use a little marker that won't smudge. Uh, not that one, not that one. So the third one we're gonna keep, not that one, not that one, not that one. Fourth. Um, we're gonna keep that one. And We're gonna keep that one. All right, so now we have our divider tabs ready to be trimmed. So this is when your paper trimmer comes in really handy. So remember, we know that the insert that I'm creating this for, the width of it is five and seven eight. So I'm going to cut the pieces that I don't want off and then just trim it. So. Let me demonstrate. So I'm gonna use my paper trimmer, align the edge of this to five and seven eighth. I'm not going to cut this bit here. So I'm gonna run the, the blade of the trimmer close to the edge there and then just manually cut it. So here we go. Oop, where is it? It's there, keep your finger. And then I don't want to cut it too far beyond that marking. So I'm just gonna take it off the trimmer and then as straight as you can, just cut that to there where they will meet. Okay, now you can keep it at that or you can manually round your corners so it's all pretty and it's not going to stab you. And you can do the same with the other edges. Okay, so if this is your laminated sheet, this is what it's going to look like. So there is your first tab. There we go, there's your first tab there, and then we're ready to hole punch it and label it a little bit later. So that is your first tab, and it looks like my blade is not sharp. I'm just gonna switch that, okay? Now let's go to the next one. 
because you made your markings on label them you know not to cut this bit so you're only going to trim up to the little markings you have there and on the other side only to the little marking you have there so once again we know the width of our insert is five and seven eighth and we're going to place our divider up to that point so the little trimmer here has a little ruler on the side there so i'm going to just put it see if i can do this up here up to five and seven eight so when i talk about seven eight see how there's one two three four five six seven and i'll just place it on the seven eight portion five seven eight again uh, there's a little marking there so if it's on your clear laminated sheet you would have made a little marking that you can remove later so i'm just going to cut up to that bit there and then flip it and up to that bit only so just be really careful take your time because you don't want to cut the tab that you want so again i'm just going to manually trim this so up to the quarter inch point and then continue the line there and again so there's your second tab and if you want to round it out just use your scissors now if you were going to use printed paper and then laminate it i highly suggest to make the size an eighth of an inch smaller than you would normally because remember you need the margin or an edge to have a sealed um, a sealed margin all around so it doesn't come apart so here we are there's the second tab second tab and then because you mark them all together it lines up beautifully rather than have, having a little gap I mean if you want a gap between your dividers that's fine too but this is how I do it so there's the second one I'm just going to fast track through the rest of these so I'll see you on the other side of this so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim tab three tab four and tab five and tab six and I'll see you once I've completed that Okay, I'm back, I've cleaned up a bit. So this is the product of the cutting of the tabs. So we have tab one, tab two, three, four, five, and six. And so if you were using it with clear laminated sheets, this is what it would look like, uh, bar the labels of course, because we'll, I'll show you how to do that later. So what we need to do is to make the hole punch. Now I don't have a six hole puncher, so I just manually hole punch it by using a template. So this is the um, plastic sheet that came along with the Filofax. If you have another um, insert or another dashboard that you can use as a template, do that. So I'm just gonna move this so the glare is not on the screen. So keep it all together. Get yourself a pencil or a pen and make your markings on your divided tabs. So again, because it's plastic, you might you want to use a little marker that won't smudge or make your markings and let it dry so it doesn't smudge off. I just use a single hole punch. I bought this one from Officeworks and I think it's less than two dollars it would normally have a plastic covering here to catch all the pieces of paper you hole punch out but i i take that off because i use the little hole as a guide to hole punch the things i want to hole punch so let's see hopefully you can see that so there's the first marking and there we go so let's just clear the rubbish. All right, so we've got our hole punch. Now for some of these, um, not all of them, but for most things that I have to move around. So instead of opening the rings of my planner, which can sometimes, you know, cause wear and tear or leave you a little gap. So instead of opening that all the time, what I do is I cut a little slit on the, uh, through the hole punched and then I can easily just slide it back in or 
slide it off. You might want to do that with all yours. So I just do that. Cut little slits. All right, there you go. Okay, now to make the labels, I have a Dymo Letra Tag label maker and this is the desktop version but you can buy whatever label maker you want it has different size fonts you can get tape that's white and prints black or the one i'm using is clear with black print that little hole there shows you how much tape you have left so this label maker creates extra small, uh, small, medium, large, and extra large, the different sizes that will print. And it also prints, I think that's the italic one. So you can have normal, italic, bold, underlined, and then you can insert numbers and you can also insert symbols. Let me show you how I use the symbol one. So see how they've got little hearts? So yeah, it has many different symbols on there. Now I won't show, go through how I use the label maker because this video will just end up really too long. So this one is the small size font, normal, and I use all capital letters and then I just trim around the edge of the word so then there's not a lot of the plastic or the clear label and it doesn't stand out too much so that's my do-it-yourself clear divided tabs using a dymo Lit letra tag label maker i use the small font and clear transparent tape okay quickly i'm going to show you how i make the top tabs for this demonstration i've got one two three four five top tabs so I'm going to so grab make yourself laminated sheets, put it through the laminating machine. You've got one, two, three, four, five. Grab your little template. So this is your insert size. Oop, there we go for the A5. So remember, we're going to add a quarter of an inch at the top to create the divider tab. So of course, on your laminated sheet, um, that way won't fit. So you will have to make it this way. So you need to measure out five and seven eighths in width. And then uh, I will need a calculator because my brain isn't working. 8.25, oh duh, eight and a half. Okay, and then of course it'll be eight and a half that way okay so for you to be able to create top tabs now if you're using clear sheet top tab is this uh the same way you will make bottom tabs it'll just depend on where you position your template or your hole punch so if you position your template the top then that'll be a bottom there will be bottom tabs or if it's the other way around Remember, because it's clear, that'll be bottom tabs. I'll show you a quick exam demonstration for the bottom tabs as well. All right, okay, so we know we need to measure out eight and a half inch. So use your paper trimmer, go for eight and a half inch, which is there. Trim your width, you're not adding on any extra, so it is, see, that's why a template is handy, five and seven eighths. Trim. Remember, if these are laminated sheets, keep them handy in a Ziploc bag. You can recycle or repurpose for task cards or bookmarks. So don't waste your materials. All right, so now we said I want to make five divided tabs for the top. So we know it's the width is five and seven eighths. 5.875 divided by 5 is 1.175. So let's find out what 0.175 of 8 is. So about 1 and 1 8. So you might have to play around with this because it's not an exact. So 1 and 1, 1 and 1 8, 1 and 1 8. 
one and one egg and it's mm, it's just yeah so then if um the last tab you have extra just play around with your yeah with your measurement until you're happy with it so again cut little tiny slits all right label so you're not cutting the wrong ones so one gonna cut those off cut that uh, cut that keep that that's better um, cut cut keep the third cut 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 keep the fourth cut 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 keep the fifth all right there we are so I'll fast track through this bit as well so for a top tab or a bottom tab, we are going to trim the excess and we know the length that we want to keep it at is eight and a quarter. So eight and a quarter, am I on screen? Eight and a quarter, so eight, one quarters, keep it there. We're going to cut up to that point. Right, there is my marking. Just cut and again round the edges here we are one tab two tab three tab four tab five tab okay so if I wanted to make bottom tabs so I've got one two three four five as well I'll do exactly the same thing I will divide the width of my insert, or my, in my case, five and seven eighths, by the number of tabs I wanna create. So if you just wanna create two, just divide it by two. If you wanna create three, divide it by three. And if you wanna have a lot of different things, and you know, divide it by however many tabs you want. Really, it's, you know, up to you how many. All right, so, Let's just say for the purpose of this video, this three are my top tabs. So I'm going to get my template to make my hole punch, line up the bottom so then the tab sticks at the top. So those are my top tabs. So since we make the bottom tab exactly the same way we do a top tab, and it's just the positioning of the hole punch. So we grab your template and align it so then the, tab, the tabs stick out of the bottom. So if we line all of these up, okay. Now um, my tabs, they're not all you know, um, the side tabs aren't all one after the other. You can mix them around. So normally the tabs or the pages that I will use most, I will have the tab um, at the front of the planner and the ones that I don't use as often will be towards the back of the planner. So if these were clear tabs and you have a two page spread, you'll be still be able to see the other side so especially say for this one, which is my homeschool weekly spread, I can see my whole week if this, if you're using the clear laminated sheet. All right, I think that's it. Let's have a look. So if these are all labeled, you can easily go, all right, well, I need to do my, uh, update my cash expense tracker. You'll go to the tab that you've labeled as cash expense. You can quickly flip to it. Oh, I need to go look at my paycheck bill tracker. Go to the tab that you've labeled. You can quickly flip through it. I need to look at my workout tracker. Go to that tab and you can quickly flip through it. Ah, that is how I make my clear divided tabs using laminated sheet, a laminating machine and a label maker. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and if so, I would really appreciate it if you hit like button, also subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to get notifications of 
when I upload new videos. My clear divider tab labels have changed since then. So let me quickly show you what I have in my current A5 planner. So at the top, I have my debit expenses, my side hustle expenses, my cash expenses, my paycheck tracker, and my habit tracker. For the side tabs, I have my well-being planner, my weekly, my gratitude log, my victory log, my cleaning list, my wellness tracker, my future log, different challenges that I have, a goals tracker, list of stuff, projects list, and someday maybe. Instagram tracker, movies tracker, my books tracker, TV shows tracker, and my 52 weeks savings challenge. Hope you enjoyed this video. Watch the full video to see tips and tricks on how to make it for other planner sizes. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.